Welcome back to That LI Garage, uh, where we specialize in Porsches and Subarus, boxer engines, and any, any other exotic, exotic engines or exotic, exotic cars. So, uh, we're working on this uh, beautiful 4S, not 4S, I'm sorry, Carrera 4 uh, 2000. Uh, we got it in last episode. Uh, this is episode number two on this build. Um, this car was said to be burnt, but there's no burn on, on to it. We went through the history and, you know, we got the whole story about it. Uh, last we had an uh, alternator. We are waiting for an alternator. I was supposed to receive it today. So I'm going to do other work meanwhile because I didn't receive it. So oil pan was leaking, if you guys remember from last time. So... I drained the fluid into this because we're going to reuse it. We found out that it was just, they just gave it this thing an oil change. So it's leaking from here. Um, I, I looked up uh, what, what a new one costs and it's, it's about 200 bucks or so, but it's going to take about a week to get. So instead, I'm just going to take it out, clean it very good, and I'm going to aluminum weld it. This way I can just, you know, wrap it up, put it back up together, and I don't have to worry about it uh, anytime soon. I mean, I can just get it done a lot quicker that way. And the second thing that I'm going to try to do is once I'm done with that, I'm going to remove the driver door. I gotta take apart the whole driver door. You see that the paint is, uh, the, the paint started peeling off from the, the tape that they had saving, uh, covering the window at, uh, at the auction house. So I'm going to take that out. I already, I took the mirror. Okay, so I took the mirror uh, off of the car already and I gave it to the, the paint place. They make, they make plate, paint. So I gave them the code and everything with the mirror so they match it as close as possible to like, basically it's, it's, it's a perfect match. They, they adjust, they, they, they have the code, they use the code, they get the base of it and then due to whatever type i don't even know i'm not even gonna lie to you explain to you how they do it but he brings you perfect paint done so i'm going to take the door out and give it to the body shop because it's the only thing that needs to be painted and then maybe afterwards we might have to blend in uh some clear coat to the outside i'm going to try not to hopefully i want to use basically the original paint that's on this so as for now i'm just going to take the oil pan out clean it really good and weld it, uh, solve the, the leaky oil issue, and then work on the door. So, if you're new to this channel, please subscribe, like, and all, and all that stuff, and let's get to work. I really need to touch the car at this point. We did a lot of our research. We looked at the car. We did what he needed to do. We know, you know, we have the somewhat of a story, but we need the back, back story, and that's what I did pretty much all, day, all night last night and today. So... This is, I'm going to show you, you know, what, what, what steps I do take to get the stories behind these cars, um, because the stories tell you a lot and, uh, will, will let me know what to look for and what to go for and what's been done to the car already that I don't need to, because originally I wanted to take the pan down and change the oil. The oil has been changed. We're going to go through that. All right. It, a lot of work has been done to this car. And it's actually, it's, it's, inter it's interesting. So first thing I did was bother Luke to get me a Carfax. That took a few hours. He finally sent it to me and we go, you know, everything, we have maintenance here. It's a Massachusetts car mainly. It was in Colorado also, but mainly had its uh, life in Massachusetts. And then there was a total loss out of nowhere. So who had the car for the last was uh, Angelo's Auto Works in West Hampton, right? And over here you see that they they did four tires balanced, four tires mounted and replaced. So, so like we know we did see that, you know the tires are brand new on this thing since December of 2020. So the tires were put on four months ago. So I mean when you guys see this, it's probably be half a year. I mean it takes me about two months till uh, till I catch up on my videos. So anyways, so we got into that and then it's it doesn't say much. It says total loss vehicle reported damage. It doesn't say accident, it doesn't say anything. Vehicle declared 
or a total loss and insurance uh, by the by insurance company fire damage reported and that's what they said okay after they reported it they did another thing they started working on it again okay so now we got oil chain oil and oil filter chains belt tension replaced serpentine belt replaced and then I got the salvage uh, certificate okay great now we 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 uh, I, I was able to call I was able to call them there was a very very sweet a very sweet lady on the phone and uh, we spoke about the car and she even faxed me the work order um, and so um, and she also told me a little bit about what, what she read so in it, the car came in, towed in for smoke and steam coming out of the engine compartment. So, further looking at this car, I looked further, I found no fire. There was no fire. The customer probably saw steam and called it fire. And probably they wanted the insurance to cover it, so it had to be fire. For, for steam, it's, it's just maintenance type of thing that you got to deal with yourself. Once you say fire, it's insurance. I think it's something had to do with that. That's my belief in this, because I, I didn't see anything to do with fire. Nothing melted even. All right. So, and then let's go further. It says, comp um... Right on the right side, com uh, engine compartment fire caused by AC compressor clutch fire. AC compressor not covered by insurance company as okay. They didn't cover that part of it, and continued insurance claim after repair for cylinder number five five have misfire and uh, alternator not charging. All right, that that confirms what we said before i said I, what i said yesterday i believe the alternator is not charging i'll i mean and that's what i did yesterday i ordered an uh, alternator that's the first thing i'm gonna do i'm gonna you know change the alternator and see if it fixes the, the misfire it might fix the misfire maybe maybe not but we i learned more as you look as you read further we'll feel we'll we'll figure this out so they did do a bunch of different things they changed the ac compressor and Refilled it uh, with uh, the with AC the AC system. They refilled filled it. They drained the system of old coolant, disconnected, removed hose, installed that a hose basically failed. A radiator hose failed, causing causing the car to uh, like overheat and steam. Right, which is not that big of a deal. And then they filled it back up. So we got new coolant in this car. Um. So here's the best part. They took it for a road test. Da, 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 da. Everything seems fine, seems fine. And then, they, so now they have the code of a misfire. Yeah, P305, mi cylinder, cylinder 5, misfire detected. And alternator is not charging. Perform diagnosis. Basically, needs we need the, nothing is charging the system. We need alternator. And it has a misfire number three, number five. Now. Of course, I would just get an alternator, throw it in there, and see what it is. They went further, and they did a compression test. So that saved me from doing the compression test, because after I would get an alternator, if it still persists, that's one of the first things I would try to do, um, along with spark plug change, coil pack change, and injector change. But, all right, so let's see. They, did, they performed a compression test, removed spark plugs, performed engine compression test, uh, recorded as a result. Now, cylinder number one, 140 psi. Cylinder number two, 140 psi. Cylinder number three, 135. Uh, cylinder number four, 140. Cylinder number five, 150. Cylinder number six, 150. Engine is good. So we need to uh, put an alternator in there. And then I could start diagnosing the... the um, uh, I can start into, uh, uh, looking into the um, cylinder number five. Cylinder number five could be, let's just, you know, 
think optimistically, it could be because it's not getting enough, the engine is not getting enough voltage to create the spark for that one cylinder. For some reason, maybe that one has the most uh, parasit uh, 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 most uh, resistance or something. So maybe that's why it has a misfire. Could be raise the voltage of the car because right now it's around 10, 10 volts as it's running, is running right off the battery. And the second you disconnect the battery, it, it, it should continue running but it should be in the 14s. So it could be because of that. And if it's not because of that, then we're gonna go into, we'll change spark plugs around and also we're gonna change coil packs around. Um, and then if it's none of those, then we'll change the, the fuel injector. Um, we'll see. Car has very low mileage, so you never know. It could be fuel injector because it might be clogged from old gas that's in there. That's a possibility too. Uh, Cause these cars then tend to sit and also, you know, if you look at them, look at this car, it's pretty, it's pretty clean. The, f the paint doesn't, is, is not faded at all. I mean, of course it needs a, a nice wash. Look at that. Look at that pearl is still clear. Headlights are very clear. You know, they could use a little, you know, cleaning and buffing, but you could see there's no yellow, there's no yellowish uh, uh, tint around here. That's what, that, that's, you know, that's what these uh, cars usually get. They get you this yellow, yellow tint around here, that's the clear coat getting uh, damaged by the UV, UV rays. So, really nice car. And it's one of those cars that shouldn't be damaged. So I'm gonna tell you, okay, so here's the other thing, other part of it. So next week, uh, next week, uh, at the beginning of next week, when changing the alternator, stay tuned to that. And it looks like they did uh, change the alternator, uh, Oh, what's it called? AC compressor. This also looks new. And the tensioner, like they said. Alright, I think they did the pulley as well. This also looks new. But, this is going to get changed. Um, this is going to get changed at the beginning of next week. Uh, and then we're going to figure out more things after that. Now, over here, uh, the tape that was covering the window over here uh, pulled, out, pulled, pulled up the paint. So, what I went to, what I started doing, and I took out the mirror, and I'm sending it into the to the store that they make paint, so they can paint match it over the weekend. They'll work on that and work on the on uh, on the paint. I mean, work on the part to get the correct paint, and then I'm going to remove the door from the car. I'm going to send it to the body shop, let it, and prepare the, prepare the door. Take uh, the the. Hit the doorknob or the, the handle out, take the wire harness, whatever I need to do, take the door cart out of it, just give him a bare door, this way he can finish it a lot faster, less work. Again, the second he has one of his guys or not, again, like I keep telling you guys this or anybody who's listening, anyways, uh, you, you make less work for them, they charge you a lot less and the chances are they'll get to it a lot faster. So if you just have a door sitting in there, it's going to be kicked around and this and that. They're like, ah, oh, let's get this door out of here. So let's just send it real quick and paint it and send it out the door, you know? If, if, if the, you know, one of his workers got nothing to do for an hour, two hours, boom, put him onto that. With the bolts out of the pan or plate, whatever you want to call it, uh, it has to come down because they have, there's, um, a uh, baffle inside of it, a plastic baffle that goes up. And also there's a bunch of sensors, a whole bunch of stuff in there. So right here is a good spot to just pry it. You can uh, push against that with all the bolts out, of course. And you, and, and you don't go crazy. You, you have to massage it out because it has, to, it has to cut itself out of all the silicone that's around it. Um, let me see. There we go. All right. I'm gonna let. I'm gonna set this over here. See, it's still new oil, clean oil. So I'm gonna set it over here. Let it drain because I have to clean it out anyways, right? I'm gonna set this aside here. I'm going to take a blade for now and a, a, a razor uh, so I can just clean all the silicone off of this. So at least this area is ready for uh, reinstall once I'm done with fixing this. All right.
right, so I cleaned the plate. And I'm gonna show you, I, I mean, I, I used a wire brush and you and hopefully I could show you, you could see it over here. You see the crack right there? Yeah, I don't know if you could see it. There's a crack right there and that's what we need to fill. And there's also a little, I mean, the crack went through to this side. So I'm gonna try to weld that crack from this side right over here. Uh, fill that up here and then I'll go on to this side and then just fill up this area too. This is aluminum So it's a little bit aluminum. So it's a little bit different to weld than anything else um, But Let's do it All right, so oil pan done the leak it's not going to leak anymore but i'm going to put this on and now let me explain to you what this does this is a baffle right the oil fill comes here the oil uh, like the oil pump comes from here there's a siphon that comes here and pulls out from this cage over here so now what happens uh when you're driving and now this is like just in case just the outside is like a box right and the oil sits in here and it splashes around let's say you take a turn and you and it, and it all the oil go, runs that way right so you have these trap doors for that reason on this side and on that side so whenever you're going this way all the oil will be allowed to come into here and then get blocked off on this side and not be able to go you know go through and stay in here so you have enough oil um for for that pull so this is this is what a this is what a baffle does uh usually race cars have this type of things high-end cars have it and these porsches do so we're gonna just uh i'm gonna install it real quick there's three 10 millimeter bolts and after that i'm gonna put silicone on the outside and put it back up into the into the engine. So with the oil pan on, nice tight and secured, all siliconed up. Um, I'm going to uh, let it dry for a few hours and tomorrow I will fill it up with oil and hopefully I'll have the alternator so I can start doing the real diagnosis. I want to install the, di the, the alternator to see what, what the misfire is in number five, uh, cylinder number five. I took the door off off camera uh, and sent it to the body shop so they can uh, start uh, painting it. And that's it for tonight. I will see you in the morning. All right, so I've got the alternator in. I did not, didn't get it in. I mean, I received the new alternator. I am going to install it right now. I'll show you step by step. And uh, I filled up the oil first. Um, I filled up the oil because once the alternator is in, there's a good chance I'll get really excited and start the car with no oil. Uh, forgetting that the oil is no oil is in there. So I, I did that. So it's done. Don't have to worry about that. So so 22 millimeter breaker bar remove the tension just to get the belt off of it. You don't need to take the whole belt off. I'm just going to take it off of these this pulley right here. All right? And that's it. I'm going to move that over so it'll be easy to put it back on later. Now I'm going to remove this bolt over here, which I believe is a 16, and so this one. Battery is disconnected. All right, I was mistaken. It's a 15 millimeter. Break it loose. Oh, that was kind of loose. Anyways, this gets loosened, and we don't, oh shit, it's broken the alternator, is it? I think it's broken too. But 
but again, like I like I said, I think it's broken. The back of it is broken too. Yep, the housing broke. Who knows the story behind that one? So there's a delicate connector right here. I'm gonna remove that one. And then we have a big power wire right here. What is that? I think it's a 13. Yeah, 13. bolt over here remove the wire again battery off because if not that touches something it's gonna make sparks put the wire back on there is a slot that it goes I'm gonna pull it out just to show you oh fuck so there's a groove you could put it I mean I guess there's different applications for this but we're gonna use this groove that's how it was on the other one so uh, we're gonna put that in this connector over here there's a small connector just move it on the side we don't want it the body of this to crush it because again it's, it's it's an older car and the plastics tend to be more brittle once they're uh, these cars get old and you just don't want to get, I, don't, I just don't want the chance of anything happening. Pull it back a little bit just to get that a little, a little plug. Plug it in because once it's in, you ain't reaching it. And start sliding it into place. out of the way I got a tiny bit more space come on there we go You want to hand tighten it because it's in a really weird position and it'll, it's very easy to, to strip, but once it's in there, it's in there. All right. All right, so now we're ready to test it, see if the alternator is working, if the alternator is the main problem of this or I mean, reason why we don't have voltage. Now, one thing before we go start it, I want to just show you. Uh, I taped up this uh, away with a, like electric tape just temporarily because usually this is held by the air box that sits here. And if we just leave it dangling, it might get, uh, the plastic might get eaten up by, uh, by the belt or this pulley. All right, key in, power it up, clutch in. So now with the, okay as of right now you could tell you know battery's full it goes up to 12 volts we're going to use this right now the last time when the car was running it was in between 12 and, and it was around 11 volts while it was running with the booster pack so oh another thing is oil where well, i i added an extra quart to it looks like i need a little bit more um so let's crank it See where we're at. It's going up. It's going up. All right. Alternator voltage is definitely something. 
misfire for sure. All right, we fixed the voltage. Oil pressure is good, so engine is good with that. We're gonna work on uh, figuring out the... Let's go take a look at this thing. Oh! Duh, okay, okay. I, I fucked up. Hey, hey, I'm allowed to mess up, okay? I'm allowed, all right? So basically, I forgot to put this whole thing back on. <laughs> Again, I was excited to see if this thing is gonna work and ended up making a mistake. This type of mistake is not that big of a deal at all. I'm just gonna put it back back together and start it up again. But uh, if I forgot the oil in it, see, that's why you gotta do it ahead of time. Put in the oil. All right, let's try this thing again. I put the bolts, those two bolts back on. This is in there. Everything is as it was before. Now let's start it. Oi. Okay. Oh, that's way better. That's way better. Still misfire. I feel the misfire. You can see the, va the, the camera is shaking a little bit. Regardless, I want to just let it run. Let it, let's get some heat in there first. Hopefully it's a coil park pack or spark plug. I'm going to change both on that one cylinder. And then uh, we're going to see what goes from there. Uh, I hope it's not a, a, um, a fuel injector. Because I would have to take, I have to remove it from up here. And that's a pain in the ass. It's doable, but it's a lot less work if you just, if it's just a coil pack or spark plug. So I'm gonna work on that. I'm gonna let this warm up a little, get some heat in there. So once I get this, once I once I get into uh, the spark plugs, it'll be easier to remove. So basically, I'm gonna have to warm up the car. I just want to just make sure there's also no coolant leaks and also this is, this is the longest it has been driven uh, running since I since I got this car. So we're just gonna do a quick inspection. for watching our dad's video so don't forget to hit the notification and please subscribe for more daily awesome future videos and if you have a question you could comment down below and don't forget to hit that bell so you can get notified to uh, to the next video that comes out and please and, like the and video and don't forget